So number one asks us to select all true statements about this equilateral triangle. First statement being that angle B and angle C are 60 degrees. We know that that's true because an equilateral triangle is also equiangular. So B and C are equal and so is this larger angle A. So if we do 180 divided by 3, we get 60 for each of those angles. B asks us if this altitude here um, is 3 square root 3. So this altitude here um, is actually taking this little short leg here times the square root of 3. And we know that this little short leg here is half the hypotenuse. So this leg here is three, and then we take um, the blue segment times the square root of three to get this orange one. So we do know that it's three square root three. So then it would not be six square root three. And then triangle ABD, so ABD, this one on the right, is congruent to ACD. We know that that is true um, because we also know that this one is three. Um, they share this 90 degree angle. There's lots of different ways you can prove that these are um, congruent. We know it's equilateral, so this is six. We know they share this side. So you could do by side, side, side. Um, you could do by side, angle, side. You could say by angle, side, angle. Lots of ways to prove that those two triangles are congruent. And then B, D, and C, D are both three units long. That's true because it cuts this six in half. Number two, find the length of each leg. So we know that this one is always half of the hypotenuse. And then we know that this one is the square root of three times longer than the blue one. So the blue one is 10 divided by two, which is five. And then the orange one is the, the blue one times the square root of three, so five square root three. Number three, an equilateral triangle has side lengths of 10. What is its area? So let's get a triangle drawn here. And each of the sides is 10. And then we want to know the area. So I'm going to leave that bottom one blank because in order to do the area, we need the height. So we're going to need to find this altitude. And... Um, to do that, then we'll also take a look at how long this side is. So we know this little piece here is um, five, so it's half the full length. And then that makes this altitude here five times the square root of three. So when we go to do the area of the triangle, we want to do the base times the height divided by two. The base here is going to be this whole thing, which is 10 times the height, which is the altitude, or the 5 square root 3. And then we want to divide by 2. So 10 times 5 is 50 square root 3 for the top, divided by 2. 50 divided by 2 is 25. So 25 square root 3 units squared would be our area. Number 4, find the lengths of the legs. So now this one is back to a 45, 45, 90. So this one's half of a square. Um, and if we remember the um, connection between the hypotenuse and the leg in a 45, 45, 90, okay, they are multiplied or divided by the square root of two. So if you have the hypotenuse, that's the longer one. So when you go back to the leg, you want to divide by the square root of two. So this um, blue segment here is going to be equal to 10 divided by the square root of 2. Um, can write it like this as well. And you could do a um, just, you could simplify the radical here, okay, which would mean that we would want to rationalize and not have a square root in the bottom. So we'll multiply both top and bottom by the square root of 2. And that gets us. 10 times the square root of 2 on the top, and then the square root of 4 on the bottom, and the square root of 4 is just 2. And then we could simplify here. 10 divided by 2 is 
um, five. So we would end up with five square root two. Okay, so one of the answers, so maybe you're allowed to leave it as 10 over square root two, that's fine. Another way to write it is five square root two. Um, and then the other way to write it would be to do the decimal. So actually multiply five times the square root of two and you would get 7.07. .07. So kind of any of those answers are fine. Number five, a square has a side length of three units. What is the length of the diagonal? Okay, so we're looking for this. Um, and remember that the relationship between the diagonal and the side is that they're a square root of two factor different. And the hypotenuse is longer, okay? So you're gonna take this one and you're gonna multiply by the square root of two to get the hypotenuse. So this is gonna be three square root two. And so we can look and we can see that three square root two is one of our answers and it just wants us to select one answer. So C is the correct answer. Number six, a step has a height of, um, five inches and a ramp starts four feet away. So let's draw this out. So we have a ramp starting four feet away from this um, step and the step is five inches and this ramp is four feet away from the base making a 5.9 degree angle with the ground. So this angle in here is five point, oops, is 5.9 degrees. What can you say about the angle the ramp would make with the ground if the ramp starts further away from the step? Okay, so if we were to take this and move it further away, so extend, and let me get maybe a different color here. So if we were to extend this further, what's gonna happen to this angle here. So that angle is going to get shorter if the step stays the same height and we just keep pulling the ramp further and further away, then the angle would decrease in size. Number seven, segment A prime B prime is parallel to segment AB. So this one is parallel to this one. What is the length of a prime B prime. So this is the base of kind of this triangle here. And then the other segment is the base of this larger triangle. So we'd want to find the scale factor that connects those. So we've got, um, if we think of AC as the original segment, okay, and A prime C as the new. So we would do the new divided by the original. Okay, so three, the green segment, divided by the original orange segment, which was nine. So we can see then that our scale factor is one third. So this green segment is going to be one third um, the length of its corresponding part 12. So A prime, B prime is going to equal one third of 12 or 12 divided by three. So that is going to be four. Then it wants to know the length of BB prime. And now this is just a chunk of the side, okay? And we know that these little segments here are proportional. So we can just look at how the three is connected to this six. So to get from three to six, we would multiply by two. So then we're gonna do the same thing here, two times three, okay? Uh, or sorry, times two. So multiply the three times the two to get the six. So this two, we're gonna multiply by the same amount. So multiply that by two and we get four. So B prime B is gonna to equal to, to two times two, which is four. All right, and then this final problem here is saying that we've got this triangle POG match the description of the rotations. Okay, under each of these rotations. So one thing I like to do in these is decide which point stays the same in each option because that's going to be your center of rotation. And in A, P stays the same and B, O does. And then in C and D, G does. So if we can figure out which drawings keep P and O in the same, we already know them. So let's take a look here. So image one 
this point, G is staying in the same spot. Um, and also in image two, G stayed in the same spot. Image three, it has P in this same spot. Okay, so P prime and P are in the same spot. And then in this one, um, O stays in the same spot. So we can kind of see that in the same space there. So then this helps us to um, narrow down our options. So the one where P stayed in the same spot is image three. So this is um, the 60 degree clockwise rotation. In image four, O stayed in the same spot. So this is the um, 60 degree clockwise rotation around O. So now we just need to look at these two and decide which one is a clockwise rotation um, 120 degrees. So let's take a look here if we did a 120 degree clockwise rotation. So remember clockwise is this way. Okay, so this segment here, and maybe I'll erase some of this. Um, this segment here is gonna rotate um, kind of two triangles worth. I don't like this because it splits one of the triangles in half. So I'm gonna look at this one, okay? And this one needs to rotate clockwise two triangles over. Okay, so then O prime is going to be right here. So let's look in both diagrams um, that are left to see which one has um, O prime rotated 120 degrees. So in this first one, we had O here, and now it's only kind of one triangle away. So this one's the 60 degree rotation. So this one had O here and now has it up here. That's a 120 degree rotation. So this one is image two, and the 60 degree rotation was image one.